Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Daniel Kwok. I'm a real estate entrepreneur. I also happen to have wrote this book titled Zero to 75 Units in One Year that you can see right there. And in this video, we're gonna go ahead and talk about how to best start your real estate investing career. I've been around hundreds and thousands of different real estate entrepreneurs along with my journey of my own. And I'm gonna share with you guys in this video exactly what I would do if I were to get started all over again. Now, guys, a little bit about me. I started real estate investing when I was 18, had negative $187.65 in my bank account. By the time I was 23, I had 87 rental doors. And now, me being in my late 20s, I'm the founder and CIO of a real estate private equity company known as Miati Partners Capital. Okay, enough about me. Let's go ahead and talk about how to best start your real estate investing career. Now, this video is simply just part one out of a total of four videos we're going to be doing releasing uh, this month, of course, of December, uh, all about real estate investing and the basics and how to get started and what's the best way to go about it. And of course, before we get started, guys, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like this video if you're feeling generous. And guys, if you feel like it's a lot of value to you, uh, share it with your friends and family. Okay, now that we got that taken care of, let's talk about how to best start acquiring rental properties. Now, the first thing that I would absolutely advise people when it comes to you know acquiring rental portfolios is to not think of it as you're buying an asset or you're buying a rental property, but think of it as if you're starting a real estate investing business. Now, guys, I've been around hundreds and thousands of other real estate investors and entrepreneurs. Some are successful, some are unsuccessful, and I had the honor to learn what the common denominator is among those that are are successful and it seems that the biggest difference is that they ask themselves three questions now these three questions is pertaining to what makes a business successful but also a business that has longevity and these three questions apply the same thing in your real estate business as well now the first question out of the three is asking yourself what is your strategic advantage and in my opinion this is absolutely huge because well I hate to break it to you, but you're not the only one trying to acquire rental portfolios, raise capital, underwrite deals, right? I mean, look at the amount of views that this video has right now. And well, those are all the other people that you're going to be competing with in the real estate investing market. So number one, you have to identify what is your strategic advantage? What makes you stand out? And uh, I'll give you guys some examples of that here in a moment, but let's go ahead and move on to the second question that you have to ask, which is number two, who is my ideal client? Every single business has this. So who is my ideal client? Now, you know what they say, you can't be everything to everyone, so you have to be the best to very few. Right? Not everybody's gonna want to buy even an Apple Watch or an Apple phone, or not everyone's gonna want a certain product. So you have to understand what your ideal client is. And number three, last but not least, you have to know what is my irresistible offer. As in, what is the thing that your ideal client is going to say, oh man, I can't resist, I have to go with that. These are the things that I have to look for. Now at this point, I know some of you guys may say, well, Daniel, what do these three questions have anything to do with real estate, right? I wanna learn how to run numbers, how to find the best deals, how to raise capital, and that's fine. We're gonna get to that in the other videos in this web series on real estate investing. But again, after spending time with hundreds of real estate entrepreneurs and even looking at my own journey, if I would have figured this out in the beginning, my real estate investing journey would have gotten a lot smoother. I would have gotten way more results a lot more quickly. And ultimately, those are the things that I want for you guys that are watching who are part of our YouTube subscriber list in our channel, The Clock Brothers. And I want you guys to win. But having said that, let's talk about how we can apply these things within the realm of real estate investing and how to start. Let's look at it from the two aspects that are most important when it comes to your real estate investing business. And that my friends is capital and it's also properties. Those two things are the two sided coins of real estate investing. You gotta have the capital, the money to invest and well, you gotta have the deals where that capital can find a place to call home. So let's go ahead and talk about Capital, how do we use those three questions? Who is my ideal client? What is my strategic advantage? And what is my irresistible offer? Now, let's go ahead and talk about these three questions in light of raising capital, just to pick this one, right? Now, guys, before we move on, I will have to say that I believe that raising capital is the most important aspect of learning how to be a masterful 
real estate investor. Because at the end of the day, if you don't have the capital, you can't do anything. Capital, a lot of times, is a lot like the blood of your health. You can have all the fancy muscles and all the best deals, but if there's no capital, then you're not going anywhere. Now, even if you have your own money to be able to do deals, well, eventually you're gonna run out of your own money. And this is a fantastic way to scale and build your portfolio. Now guys, a quick story before we move on. I remember when I was nine years old and I was on what's known as a play date. It was me and some other kid in the complex my mom forced me to hang out with because he was the only other Korean kid, right? So we were playing and all of a sudden my friend's mom walks in and she goes, hey, who wants apple pie? And both of us being nine year old boys say, me, 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 I want apple pie. And so she goes out into the kitchen. Five minutes later, she comes back with the sad look on her face and she goes, boys, I'm afraid there's no apple pie today because I ran out of sugar. Now, before we even had an opportunity to pout and be sad, uh, she actually got an idea. She started knocking on the door of every single neighbor in her apartment complex and she started making a deal. And she goes, hey, you know, if I give you uh, a slice of freshly baked warm apple pie in 45 minutes, are you willing to give me three and a half cups of sugar? And sure enough, the second door that she knocked on, there was an older gentleman and he decided to take the deal. That's exactly what raising capital is. You have your product, which by the way, is compiled of the opportunity, the deal, and not just the deal, but also yourself, and also the market and the strategy in which the asset and you happen to be under the context of. So that's exactly what raising capital is. It's just simply exchanging your product, your strategy, and yourself for capital in order for both of you guys to be able to eat. Okay, so raising capital is super important. Now let's talk about in the context of raising capital, but also applying those three questions. And if, again, if I were to start all over again, this is exactly what I would do. So number one, I gotta ask myself, who is my ideal client? Now, in terms of understanding who our ideal client is for raising capital, well, we have to understand what product even we're talking about. So since we're talking about buying rental real estate, we're gonna do it in the context of purchasing a multifamily building. Now that could mean a four unit building, could mean six units, whatever you wanna call it, right? But let's say that we have like a six unit building that we're looking at, right? We love the deal, we wanna analyze it, it looks good, it looks like it's gonna cash flow. And we have to understand, well, what are the biggest value propositions for this six unit complex, as opposed to something like a fix and flip or a short sale or a lease option? You know, what is it about buying this six unit building that's going to really resonate with people and what the value propositions even are? Well, I gotta say, when I think about buying and hold real estate investing, I think about tax advantages. You know, I think about cash flow. I think about equity growth. And by the way, for those of you guys that don't know what equity growth is, it's when you're leveraging a piece of real estate. So you go to a bank or you have the owner finance you, which by the way, we're gonna talk about that on video three. And what you're doing is you're paying down the principal every single year, right? And so what that means is it's our equity growing. We're guaranteed to have more equity next year than we are to have this year, which not a lot of other investment assets can say that, right? So there's equity growth. And on top of that, there's appreciation. Now, appreciation is not when you appreciate something. Appreciation, there you go. I spelled it right, right? Okay, perfect. Now, appreciation, again, is not when you say, hey, great job to my wife, or appreciating someone, no. It's when the value of your asset is increasing, right? So there's different ways you can do it within real estate investing, but we're not gonna get into that because that's a topic for a whole nother video. But uh, what you can do is you can increase the income, therefore increasing what something's worth. It could also increase because other properties around it are also increasing, or you can have like what's going on right now, that the rate of inflation is so high that property values are not only going up, but they're also inflating. So they're appreciating via what's happening in the macroeconomic space. So these are some of the value propositions that owning a potential six unit could bring. Now we have to ask ourselves, well, who are the people, who are the ideal individuals that are going to resonate the most with that? And these are the type of questions that we have to ask. So we took care of our ideal client, therefore the sales process is super easy, which by the way, guys, my recommendation for you is don't try to sell, right? If you're talking about creating an ideal client, you shouldn't have the need to sell as opposed to you're creating a space for them to walk into to want to buy. I'm gonna say that again because it's super duper important. Don't create a space where you're selling them 
Instead, understand what these value propositions are, understand who your ideal client is, so that way you can create a space where they want to buy as opposed to you trying to sell them. So for me, in my real estate journey, it took me years to find out that my ideal client, based on all these things, now I'm not talking about the individual that it's going to resonate with this, I'm not talking about the individual that's gonna say, oh yeah, that's all nice, I'm talking about the person that is most ideal to join me as an investor when it comes to this six unit property, right? This hypothetical six unit property. And after years of trying to figure it out, I learned that my ideal client are actually doctors. Why? Because doctors love tax advantages. I don't know about you, but I don't know a lot of doctors that are poor, right? A lot of them tend to make a lot of money. Therefore, they pay a lot of taxes, especially on investment income. So they really appreciate the depreciation, aka the tax advantages that buying and holding real estate is going to have. Uh, not only that, they may not want the cash flow as much, but it's pretty nice, right? It supplements your income. They love, love the equity growth and the appreciation because it's long-term benefits of investing. Uh, a lot of doctors that I know and I'm friends with love what they do. They love the fact that they get to help people and they get to you know, change and save lives, literally. So they're not really looking to leave their job anytime soon. However, they want to be in a really good financial position 10, 15, 20 years from now. So that's why even now, a lot of the investors that I want to attract uh, tend to work in the medical field and are doctors because, well, it's just a more better fit. If there's more of an alignment than somebody who, let's say, they just want to make quick money now, right? They want to buy something and have it double within nine months and then sell it, right? Now, granted, there's a lot of risk in that, but hey, everybody has their own qualms. Okay, so that's number one, ideal client. Number two, uh, what is my irresistible offer? So uh, again, after years of thinking about this and finally understanding that I need to have an irresistible offer for me to give myself an edge, uh, I asked myself, well, out of the people in my ideal client, what are the things that they value the most? And how can I create something that I offer them they, they possibly cannot say no to. And so after speaking with a lot of individuals that fit under the criteria of ideal client, I learned that my individuals love the tax advantages. So my irresistible offer slash what my competitive edge was, right? Like what is my strategic advantage? I learned that what I could do is give my limited partners, AKA my investors, people who bring the capital so I can get the deal, so we can get the deal, 100% uh, of the tax advantages. And as a matter of fact, even in my firm now, Miati Partners Capital, we give our limited partners not only 100% of the tax benefits, but we actually give them 100% of the ownership of the asset. So for me, that's my irresistible offer and the competitive edge that I have today. So for you guys that are wanting to start out in uh, acquiring rental properties, number one, you have to understand, to sum it up so far, what we covered, you have to understand that you're starting a real estate investing business. And in order for your business to be successful, you have to address these three things. Now, I did it with you guys for investors. I encourage you to do the same on your own time, but try to do the same thing for sellers when it comes to deals as well. Okay, so having said that, let's talk about the other things aside from understanding your ideal client, your irresistible offer, and your strategic advantage, uh, and how you can apply it to the both sides of real estate investing, the capital and the deals. Let's talk about a lot of the other things that you need to learn when it comes to real estate investing. Uh, now, because I don't wanna write all this out and spend some time, I'm gonna go ahead and and boom, there it is, just like magic. All right, so I'm gonna go over these with you. Now, I believe these seven things are things that you really need to address the first three months, six months, perhaps even year uh, of you beginning your real estate investing journey. The first one, we already talked about raising capital, building relationships with potential investors. Number two, it's real estate risk analysis. Now guys, please write this down. This is actually a quote that my mentor told me when I first started real estate investing. And the quote is, when it comes to investing in real estate, always protect your downside and your upside will always take care of itself. Please write that down. That quote has saved me from so many different bad deals that I've done. And sometimes real estate investing is not about how good of a deal you can get into, but which ones you can actually avoid. Uh, number three is underwriting. I call this my PPP method. No, it's not the paycheck protection plan or the program or whatever it's called. But in terms of underwriting, I call it the person, the place, in the property. Why? It's because while well, all these other videos across YouTube and other coaches and gurus, they always talk about, well, let's go ahead and do a cash flow analysis. Let's 
analyze the cash flow. And I'm not saying cash flow is not important. That's absolutely great. However, when you want to talk about underwriting and analyzing the full deal, you can't just talk about one aspect of the property. You have to talk about the person and also the place, AKA the market and what neighborhood and when in the cycle you're investing in. Uh, these things are really important. We're gonna, and we're going to talk way more about that in video number four, when we talk about how to analyze uh, deals the right way, right? The best way possible. Uh, number four, focus on building a team. That's super duper important. Number five, uh, relationships with financing as in, hey, even if you're new to real estate investing, uh, if you have any plans in the future of acquiring rental properties, start building a relationship with people and banks right now. Um, you don't need to be a real estate investor to go ahead and extend your hand and say, hi, my name is Daniel, what's your name? No knowledge needed to be able to do that, right? We all know how to do it. Number six, business strategy. And last but not least, number seven, KPIs. All right, so I'm gonna talk about KPIs here for a little bit. KPIs are what's known as key performance indicators. And when I work with a lot of beginner and amateur real estate investors, especially the ones that are my coaching clients, the first thing that I do is I sit down with them and I say, okay, we gotta figure out your KPIs. Now KPIs are what's known as your key performance indicators. And what they are is daily action steps, weekly action steps, and sometimes even monthly action steps to ensure that the ball is being moved forward. And not only that, but you're also going in the right direction. Okay, so I wanna share with you guys a quick story. So on January 1st, 2017, I wrote down in my notebook that my goal for that year, my New Year's resolution, was to have 20 rental doors. I wanted nothing more to have 20 units on December 31st of 2017. That was my yearly goal. And at the time, my mentor actually sat me down and said, Daniel, I'm gonna give you a piece of advice. Uh, don't set goals, set standards and expectations. And so what he had me do is he had me reverse engineer my goal of 20 units and figure out, well, what are my best and most highest efficient action step for every day, for every week, and also every single month. And these are things that I was required to do for the entire year. Now guys, I'm not saying setting goals is bad. I'm not telling you to not you know, write your goals down or create a vision board or whatever. But for me, I see a lot of individuals doing that. And while well, the success rate for entrepreneurs and real estate investors is not very high, right? So uh, in my opinion, this is just a much more effective way. So uh, to finish off that story, uh, I did. I came up with five KPIs. These were five things that I did every single day. I had three things that I was requiring myself to do every single week. And one thing that I did every single month to ensure that the ball is being moved forward. So a total of nine, nine action steps every day, every week, and also every month. And sure enough, by the end of 2017, on December 31st, I ended up with 83 rental doors, more than four times what my initial goal was, right? I think Abraham Lincoln once said that if you give me six hours to cut down a tree, I will spend four hours sharpening the ax. And that's exactly what you're doing when you're spending time to create your KPIs. This is so important, especially when you're in the beginning stages of learning how to acquire rental properties is creating these daily, weekly, and monthly action steps that you need to do to be able to get those types of results, especially when it comes to your development and your real estate investing knowledge, and also raising capital, finding deals, you name it. I would have a KPI for every single one of those things. Now, this is important because it's all about being productive and being efficient. When you're first starting out, especially if this is your first year of learning how to acquire rental properties, you're going to exert a lot of energy, a lot of you know mental real estate, a lot of things, time, you name it, money sometimes even, towards things where in hindsight, they didn't really matter and they didn't really serve you all that well. I mean, think about the last time you really learned how to master something. Maybe it was a sport, maybe it was a business, maybe it was your job, maybe it was a musical instrument. Well, when you first start out, you mess up a lot, right? And that's normal. And I'm not telling you to not mess up, but you eventually get to a point in your journey and learning whatever it is that you're doing that a lot of what you did in the beginning was a lot of time wasting. What this is, it's the art of making sure you're not only going the right speed, but also going in the right direction as well. Okay, so with that said, let's talk about how you can generate these KPIs, right? So I'm gonna give you guys an example of how to create a KPI because of how important it is when you're first starting out in your business. Okay, so let's go ahead and rework this. Again, we're gonna reverse engineer just like what we did last time, and I'm gonna actually do it for you. So let's say that the first thing, the top, the number one thing you wanna do is obtain 
a rental portfolio. There you go. Doesn't that look nice, right? So we're going to go ahead and obtain a rental portfolio. Now, uh, if you guys were anything like me when I first got started, uh, I had no money. As a matter of fact, when I got started in real estate, I was 18 years old. I had negative $187.65 in my bank account. It was horrible, right? I had a couple maxed out credit cards. It was ridiculous. So the first thing that I had to do at the time was recognize my situation. And by the way, that was me. Maybe that's not you, right? Maybe you're in a situation where, hey, I've got a little bit of money saved up. Or, hey, you know, uh, I don't have money saved up, but I certainly wasn't in debt like you or Daniel, right? So first and foremost, recognize your situation. So for me, I had to recognize that I didn't have money to invest. Uh, I didn't have great credit and I had to work a way around it. So uh, what was my solution? Well, my solution was to give part of the deal away. Just like Shark Tank, right? Members of Shark Tank, the TV show, they go in like, hi sharks, my name is Daniel Kwok and I'm giving away 30% of my company for $250,000. That's pretty much what you're doing. Now remember the pie story, we're giving away a piece of the pie for three and a half cups of sugar to make the pie work. Well, it's good as apple pie without sugar, right? Okay, I give part of the deal away. Remember, create a space where people wanna buy, they don't wanna be sold to, remember that? Okay, now the way I do it is I have to create and come up with a list of value propositions, right? As in, you know, tax benefits, kind of like what we did earlier, right? But make it unique to what deal you wanna do. So if you wanna go ahead and do a six unit like what we did earlier, that's fantastic. If you wanna go after a larger apartment, great, that's fantastic. You wanna go after a single family you know, deal or you, know, or you wanna go after a fix and flip, fantastic, right? Have at it. But what you wanna do is what I want you guys to do is create a list of value propositions that you're going to invite people to join you alongside of. Okay, so after that, uh, figure out, like we already did, uh, who is your ideal client? as in who are the people that resonates the most with these value propositions that you come up with. Now guys, this is not something you do in five minutes. I would encourage you actually, you know, go to a quiet place, spend an hour, spend two hours, you know, going through this reverse engineering process like what we're doing now. Cause by the end of it, after, by the end of this whole process, we're gonna come up with a KPI. We're gonna come up with some action steps for you to do. All right, so who is my ideal client? Who resonates with this the most? So as you guys heard earlier, the people that you know I believe resonated most with my product when I first started in real estate were the doctors. So now the question becomes much more clear, right? It all of a sudden went from, well, how do I obtain a rental portfolio to something that is a lot more specific to, hey, what are some things I can do daily, weekly, and monthly that I could network with doctors, that I could introduce myself to doctors and potentially solve a problem for them? Remember guys, that's what you're doing. You're not trying to sell them. You're not trying to recruit them. The reason why we're reaching out to them is because these are the people that resonate the most with the value propositions that we have on the list, AKA the people who we can serve the most. That's who we're talking about here. I mean, this is like the equivalent of trying to sell ice cream on a very hot July day. You're gonna do really, really well. However, if you're trying to sell ice cream or milkshakes in the middle of winter, uh, like in Chicago where I live, well, good luck with that. You're not gonna have as much success in sales. So, okay, going back to this, uh, at the time of me reverse engineering my KPIs, when I sat down with my mentor, um, I looked over doctors, how do I track them? Okay, so what I started doing is I started writing uh, a newsletter. So on top of a newsletter, uh, I also attended a couple of meetups that were related to doctors and individuals in the medical field. And I started building a relationship with them. And for me, uh, I offered a ton of value, right? It wasn't like I was, you know, spamming doctors. I wasn't texting them or, you know, I wasn't going, hey, Hector, I know we just met, but you should totally invest. That's not what I was doing. I was building authentic and genuine relationships, looking to truly serve them and uh, create a win for them, right? And actually help them win. That's what I was more so looking to do. So like I said, I also created a newsletter that was solely focused on, hey, uh, here's what individuals such as doctors or lawyers, but more specifically doctors, what they could do to um, increase their financial situation, diversify their investment portfolio by investing in real estate and how it can help. I would do stuff like market news. I would feature guests, you name it. I got super 
duper creative with it. Um, and that's what I did every single you know week. You know, this newsletter was one of my KPIs, right? Put out a newsletter once a week. And my daily action steps was to do research for it, write it, um, go to networking events, et cetera, et cetera. So those, this right here probably made up two or three out of my nine total KPIs. Cause that's how I got to introduce myself to potential investors. Because well, when I first got started, I didn't have a network. My dad was a pastor. I went to a small Christian university. You know, there wasn't a lot of people that I could talk and reach out to for investment opportunities. So with that said, guys, in my opinion, these are some of the best things that we could do. And just to recap, right? Everything we covered in this video, remember, we're creating a real estate investing uh, business. We're also asking the three questions of who is my ideal client? What is my strategic advantage? And what is my irresistible offer? And not only that, but we're also going over the KPIs of what we need to do every single day, every week and every single month, along with the list of things that we talked about in terms of raising capital. And I think I actually have it right here. Boom. So raising capital, real estate risk analysis, and all of these are the things on the list. I think if you did everything that we just covered in the video for the first three to six months and really honed in and focused on those things, you're going to have a phenomenal and successful start and foundation to building a real estate investing business, which includes having a rental portfolio. All right, guys. So with that said, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're feeling extra generous and you like this video, well, go ahead and click like. Uh, so with that said, guys, thank you so much. Comment down below any questions and I'll see you guys all in part two of this series.